To take a photograph is to align the head, the eye, and the heart. It's a way of life. Such words can only have been spoken by someone who truly believed them, and of anyone, Henri Cartier-Bresson most certainly did. He devoted more than 40 years of his life to photography, traveling across the globe and capturing candid moments of real life and the human experience. From his time as a photographer for the French army during World War II, to being the first Western photographer allowed into the Soviet Union, Cartier-Bresson seemed to be at every major historical event, ready with his camera in hand to immortalize those moments in film. There is much to be learned from his incredible example, for he was truly aligned in the head, eye, and heart. Regarded as a pioneer of candid photography, street photography, and photojournalism, he was a master at creating powerful compositions in the spur of the moment. Regarding this subject, Cartier-Bresson wrote, To me, photography is the simultaneous recognition, in a fraction of a second, of the significance of an event. He had an astounding eye for light and dark and how they interact with one another in an image. With this gift, he crafted images that looked staged in the blink of an eye. It sometimes seems incredible that so many of his photographs he just happened upon while walking down the street. He saw the beauty in the mundane and ordinary, and through his lens and highly trained eye, it became meaningful and impressive. While, as I mentioned earlier, many of his photos were taken at significant places in time and history, he still maintained his vision and documented what he felt was significant about the event. Author Natalie Aubert, in an article for History Today, writes that this probably is the reason why his photographs do not look like news pictures. Although he was often at the right place at the right time, capturing many important historic events, Gandhi's funeral, the USSR, just after Stalin's death, the Cultural Revolution in China, mostly they contain a human element that is timeless. Aubert isn't the only one who's noticed the timeless element that so many of his photos display. An article about an exhibit of his work written by Nola Tuli, an editor and writer who has worked at the International Center for Photography, discusses how Cartier-Bresson sought to portray universals in human experience, what he called the sameness of man, but with rigorous classicism and attention to form. This sameness of man is something that was gaining importance then and that still carries significance today. For him, an example of this is given in an article reviewing a show that displayed his work titled Cartier-Bresson, The Decisive Moment. One of the photos included in this review is of a man sleeping on a pile of newspapers on the ground below an attentive crowd for the coronation of King George VI. After dissecting the photo, journalist Marjorie Backman writes that Cartier-Bresson's ultimate statement on the coronation, all humanity matters. He went about capturing this element of existence by being unafraid to snatch moments when the subject of the photo was unaware of his presence. Returning to Backman's article, we read how, in many photos, Cartier-Bresson captured people in a flash in a private or telling moment, rather than how they might formally present themselves, and in the process offered an essential truth about the human condition. He moved in when they were not looking, noticing, or even awake. But how did these spontaneous shots shape the photographic world today? An answer in a number of ways. Through his many years of work, he paved the way for amazing street photographers such as Jill Friedman and Gary Winogrand. As a founding member of Magnum Photos, Cartier-Bresson also helped protect the rights of photojournalists by allowing them to own the rights to their photos. Another important way we can see an impact from his work is through the popularization of street photography and candids. I feel like this is something we can find everywhere from Instagram to museums, largely because it feels genuine and honest to viewers. People like to see the truth, whether it's ugly or beautiful, most would argue it's better to know than to remain in the dark. If only it were as easy to master as he makes it seem. It seem. The way Cartier-Bresson was able to walk down the street and form a meaningful composition is something that I would love to be able to do. Be able to do. Of course, he wasn't just snapping photos left and right. There was no doubt thought and planning that went into every picture he took. What makes his work so impressive is his trained eye. I'd love to have the skills to walk into any situation and have an eye trained well enough to find and combine elements into effective images. His focus and attention towards the smallest details in a photo are extraordinary and something I'm dying to master. I hope to put his methods to practice by thinking and observing before I shoot instead of snapping away and hoping one turns out. As he said himself, thinking should be done before and after not during photographing.